John Melvin. Uh, welcome to the program this morning. Good morning to you and to family in uh, television land. I'm sure you're looking forward to, um, you know, parliament um, sitting today. Um, but, but before that, we see, you know, um, the day the, the parliament uh, do the swearing in ceremony. We were there. I, I had interviews with you, and you've been analyzed for you as well. Um, what in, how generally you go and you go assess these six parliaments, which we just show new uh, women them way they come parliament for the first time, women they way been on day day, and the former uh, president of the female caucus proudly say he feel fulfilled and then go and show say he serve as mentor for the new women them. We get over forty women them. Mm you know, as members of parliament, We're not for the very first time that is happening. Yeah, of course, very, very unprecedented. Mm -hmm. And for that, we want to say thanks to the government generally. And that cannot be far from the fact that the last parliament, we're not the fifth, despite all in inadequacies, yet still the total necessary force to amend the Public Elections Act of 2022. And above all, let me see, I'm necessary for enact the GB bill. These two bills are so that they open the floodgates for we see more women in the parliament like we ever see them before. And interestingly also, it's good that we hear from the MPs themselves that they plan for car work for women them because the expectation upon them now very, very high. I look forward to see Ula go be the lead, Ula, Ula go be the, the leader and how the leadership now the female caucus get for day because this get for involved leadership vision. This get for involved leaders, leadership planning. And, and of course, leadership commitment. Because as at now, all the women then they expect to see this number as so well cool <laughs> and difference for day. So for me, the first thing I look forward to, the leadership of the female caucus is one, but also what will be their work or activity plan. Mind you, the GV bill, people are not keen to know this, the GV bill gets a time frame mm -hmm. for its complete rolling out. So long of say we don't get someone mm -hmm. same. I think that's like two years for the roller out in phases. But one thing I look up forward to now for let this female caucus take them as them duty or them picking or follow up the reports as part as containing the GB bill where MDAs them for the submit on the gender sensitivity and gender lens. I hope this caucus inside the action plan then will focus on the report and they that them MDA they will send the report and in a parliament mm -hmm. and parliament for them and deliberate upon them and get resolutions. If that be, I will suspect say perhaps we'll get something like over 50% of women come 2028. But that being said, let me get the facts right. We have 149 MPs, and if we have 42 women, mm. I am not a mathematician, that mm. is still not 30%. Mm. However, the catch there is, if you look at the 135, and you reduce the 42, mm. then we can safely say yes, we've achieved the type. So in one front, on one front, 30% is there. Mm -hmm. On the general front, we still yet to, the number of women to, to, to achieve that. We've been there in our parliament, you know, um, where the elections happen for the speaker, mm -hmm. um, the deputy speaker, mm -hmm. and the speaker being able to announce leadership positions, them, um, you know, for these six parliaments. And, um, you, you know, the, the picture is the, the, the leadership of the fifth parliament mm -hmm. is what we have, say, mm -hmm. for um, Honorable Emerson Lamina, we come as deputy leader mm -hmm. of government business too, mm -hmm. and you get Honorable Tawa we come as deputy whip mm -hmm. too as well. Um, what in the make of, um, you know, the status quo in parliament from the fifth to the sixth parliament? Well, firstly, I want to tell parliament, thank you for letting them follow the procedure. But I think so it's about talking many people are not going like, it seems as if even within the SLPP, they are not democratic among themselves. I've not been seeing any reason why we not see election. Yes, now internal party decision. But for the fact well, that... people were asked to nominate. Yeah, but... They, 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 uh, Dr. Abbas Bundu was the only person with the nominates and Honorable Senge Pona, the only person with the nominates for deputy. That's what so I'm that's democracy. People were asked to nominate. Well, to you don't know whether internally they agree, say, we well, don't know this candidate, they are not But consensus as well is part of democracy. If internally the party agrees, say, this is what we want to do, mm -hmm. that is part of the democratic process. And can sit down and agree on what they want to do. Is yeah, it, yeah but ele elections are the hallmark of democracy. Mm -hmm. We do so with this city because of elections denial. Mm -hmm. So if you say consensus, consensus is always mean, doesn't always mean political consent. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can mean political coercion. So for me, I mean, they expect election. Mm -hmm. SLPP being a democratic party, party would always pride itself, at least even if it's for a show, mm -hmm. but have an election that there was an alternative But, 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 but candidate. the SLPP is a party within mm -hmm. a parliament and then get the leadership. Mm -hmm. If the party leadership agrees, 
we are not going to put anyone against um, the previous speaker. We believe so in this team for goal. Uh, uh, perhaps what uh, waiting for be worried about now because the opposition not been there. Perhaps if we don't put another candidate for contest against um, uh, Dr. Abbas Bundu. That's a scary fact, and that's you come to my point because the opposition not be there. You be need somebody for play the fiddle of the opposition, mm -hmm. and that's why. Mind you, we follow this this thing for the, for the speaker. All right, yeah, we are names already there. We are flyers of people, the likes of Honorable Solomon Senge Port Thomas coming out to say vote him for speaker. Yeah, we are other names. So how all of a sudden overnight, you know, I just really criticize APC for back then. Don't not forget history. We always be the criticized APC seen a one man show or now I concur, I support. Is that the kind of democracy we want to see? If a political party is not internally democratic, how can they govern But But my colleague Joseph Johnson talked to Honorable um, CD mm -hmm. Tunis and he say the party don't sit down with the leadership and don't agree say. Make them allow um, Dr. Abbas Bundu for continue for be um, speaker and go put him as a candidate. Then after two years, he go come out with the ambition again. So it, it, the point again at the time we're making that if party gets a consensus, then see them, isn't that part of the democratic process of you know asking people to agree on certain things? We must be very careful not to make political parties demagogues. Okay, if we are in a democracy, people we people for right for go and contest for any two they want. If we begin to allow political parties for gag people and political ambitions because of their say 77 k then where is the democracy going? So for me, my position on that, yes, now the party in rights for decide that. Mm -hmm. But for the general, now this is not about party politics, this is about governance, all right? So if you come, for example, you get a leadership of almost all of the old and include few young people and just one woman, is that gender sensitive? We'll all left that gender aspect of, on the leadership. For me, my question at that, for the fact that there is no internal play of democracy seen at that time, opposition already, if opposition for the see that is the best application of, of, of the practice. But for the fact that now no, no more, at least when I make another way from let people and say among ourselves when I challenge. If you cannot challenge within your party, then what happens if the opposition challenge you? So for me, that is one area, but like you say. Another aspect, I think see, the youthful nature of the parliament should be commended, and we hope that the young people already come and will learn fast, as we see the likes of the Honorable Abu Kabu, the Honorable Mari Konte, the Honorable Ibrahim Sawa Konte, the Honorable Abu, Ka Abu Ka Karim Kamara. I was very impressed with the Ijabi, and I'm sure that now one woman, Honorable Oga, for puts very keen attention, because, well, you know, Honorable Oga says, you know, in our tool for we are journalists, mm -hmm. how fast you think on your feet, it says this person here, again, can deliver. So that lady, I want to say commendations to her. Um, and of course, I don't take a swipe at the leadership and, and definitely um, the politics. That is the most scary part. We are having a legislature that is partly one party. It has got its merits because we're not going to see that threats again. We're not going to see the filibustering and delays. But again, the merits. It means say, anyone with a carrot, nah, let my people go. Is that the kind of democracy we want to see? And that's why more, the more reason we are still calling on the main opposition APC mm -hmm. for see the need for going at the legislature. With the Northern legislature, it's going to be scary. Today, they, are, they will be announcing committees, hopefully. If they, announce those, if they are going to announce those committees and they're not there, I don't expect Senegal to put their name then they. And by the time you can't say, we're well, not say half half committee that you can meet. So it's not in their interest. Of course, there's going to be delegations to international parliament. If you are not there, pass them the left, the left space sonar. And APC not getting numbers. So for the democratic health and well-being of the legislature, we need an other alternate voice. The paramount chiefs, they cannot do it. So now, what we left with is a default opposition leader in the person of Honorable Mohamed Bangura. Mm -hmm. Where now my expectation say by today, perhaps they will announce as interim or acting opposition leader. Where you have that kind of situation, then and the party and the, the man on the see one side, what happens if you begin for calm and can't take sides on the on the government bench? So it's not helpful for the democracy. And I think the politics itself is what makes this parliament gonna be toxic and the fate of it uncertain. Of course, lawmaking, any law we can under now, for let you go see, me sabi SBP honorable, we not get symbol just because of a challenge, one law where they may come on the earth. And that is honorable Moses Bemba Joki. We all know what's happening. We're honorable Tawa and honorable Gavao and challenge them party. So imagine, from Bologna of we said, we cannot expect much from SLPP only in SLPP accountable in the legislature. That is the hard fact. Anyone panets guy, either you know, come back or then go send you on a backbench or you lost your symbol. 
Go and ask Honorable Moses Bemba Jockey from Bonds. He's one of the best MPs. He served two terms. He was the committee chairman on health. Because uh, um, the executive sent one bill where they not consult the committee, it's all kind of well. Many people felt that, oh, he has embarrassed the, the government bench. And he was in our parliament again. So if, he, if he they say, I will get liberal, honorable, and SFPP, or we'll get uh, radical SFPP, I don't even expect that from Honorable Tawa. Unfortunately, not Kaya. Yeah, we, we, we still they look I, forward. I we, even still, we still they look forward for get Honorable Tawa. You know, um, we they expect at least morning for January. So um, we will get some of the reactions them on some of the things them we uh, Melvin they say. But Melvin, I want to push um, to um, the issue of uh, the expectation of waiting get for happen today. I mean, they read the other paper just so and I see say, the speaker get for um, giving acceptance speech mm -hmm. and they get for um, you know get committees them we. Um, then they announce, um, you, you know, waiting, waiting at that process, say, how we get for talent? Like, is it that way they go um, in getting committees direct even without the, um, the, the, the main opposition in the well? If they're not attentive, we don't know, maybe they can show up. Well, there is political arrogance. Honorable Mohamed Bangwa is still uh, showed up the last time. We, we get for talk to another program anyway. The, there is this political arrogance on both sides where they see we will not make progress from after election. It seems as if no mediation, no dialogue, or any of the yield foods. Now, the summoning in, in itself of parliament itself earlier in itself gets impact on negotiation. Now we are coming to speaker, of course, speaker get for talk. Me, I look, I look forward to waiting speaker get for can talk, particularly so with regards to the, the, the full participation of, of, of the main opposition. Mind you, Dr. Abbas Bundu, no matter which you say, in experience in law, in politics and diplomacy, give him an edge. However, the good thing about having Dr. Abbas Bundu for me, is he represents the ethno-regional inclusivity where people are not the talk. For me, I think in the whole leadership of the SMP, I stand to be corrected, except for Honorable Tawa, Honorable Emerson Lamina. The rest are coming from a certain region where we always only critique and criticize. So if you have the, supi the superior and president of Honorable Abbas Bundu, I think we should expect much from him. However, I talk about the political arrogance. If all of these processes are going unabated, it means we have not made any progress in us trading between the APC and SLPP. And what they need to do is they push people them further than the corners. Mm -hmm. What do we expect for C? SLPP, APC will say, okay, until the door wash, don't go open parliament. You will call the word rush because according to constitutionally, you get 28 days for letting you call the parliament. And that now the president in power and now you use. So now they go to sit and they watch today, announcing these committees. Now they don't announce leadership. They are not there, which is very, very key. The leadership is now there of the SLPP, but you cannot call it the leadership of the, the general leadership. We used to know it's not the leadership of parliament. Mm -hmm. You forget the leader of the opposition, leader of government business, leader of um, opposition with all the people and they comprise. But now what we're left with is a one party driven leadership. Until and unless today they announce Mohamed Bangura, <laughs> we, we cannot have it. So, the, 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 the way on the process then they go, yes, we all go glad to say yes, um, nobody can hold the democracy back. We all go glad to say yes, the business of government cannot be stalled by anybody. But again, we should count the consequences. For me, we fear that law not make huge, huge progress. At the end of the day, we get for can get need back for can correct and make amendments. It creates confusion, it will create chaos, the legislative business will be stalled, and all of that not in the interest. So for me, my expectation from Bulem is limited. And from covering from the fourth parliament, I always learn one thing from the House of Laws, limit your expectations for letting not be disappointed. Mm. Melvick, let's talk about the operations of MPs particularly. A few uh, months before the elections, they will be getting here. Uh, and a particular question we are going to you now about the technological advancement mm. at, in the world of parliament. Mm. And also now, we don't hear you say they've got at least two or three researchers, you know, for mm. help in the work. So uh, particularly for let them be effective, how then they go, go help in the progress? Of course, if, um, the, with the technological advancements in the introduction of tablets, mm -hmm. as we expect, they already we don't get desktop computers, they already get an electronic registration system, mm. and the clerk even the popo, they, they announce more technological advancements and, as you rightly say, researchers and things. <coughs> I think that's what we need. Mm. One thing we make with previous parliament and now we don't need effective, now that, that one MP, now in the research, now in, now in the can present, now in the do all things. So you left them for let it be ineffective, and now this will be done the talk. So now that the administration of parliament don't think can necessarily say they need this thing, we they expect them for up the game. You don't get excuse again. However, there is still a downside because yeah. if you get your research, you get all things. If you don't get office, usai, 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 you go sit up for do the research. 
So that's an aspect where I think they're for factoring. But the whole idea of advancing with technology, I think say a day in the best interest of parliament and the MPs themselves, and then for being ready, you know, not say you know, you know, are born before computer, it's better you go take computer class one time mm -hmm. because the digital advancement, no matter what you say in parliament, it has, I mean, it don't, it don't go compared to any other, any other parliament. Today, parliament sits in the ground with the CR live, first term, for let you even go see how parliament is itself. Me, it's a former speaker, I don't call the name, he used to describe parliament as Igbale. But today, no matter what you say, the parliament is open. People can sit everywhere in the world and know it in the happen mm -hmm. in the parliament. So I think saying that then where we forgo in terms of advancing the administrative and management of the parliament. Mind you, there are two prongs here. The administration of parliament is, is a public business. And you have the political, which is a party business. So for me, keeping that fine balance, I think that's what the clerk has done. And we hope that the MP then will harness these available resources so the betterment of the country. So now, let's assume you want to talk on, on gender. You no need for, for being catch, catch. You, you research, you go down do research, you go there online, and you see all those things. That is welcoming. And therefore, honest them and make good, good use of them. On another note, to the absence of particular MPs there, I want to make certain uh, consideration to um, KKY mm. uh, this morning. So what do you go say? Because you know, say it carry on very uh, specific research the way mm. you do, especially on the one on, on fake results mm -hmm. and other policies the way you input are also necessary. Mm -hmm. So and you make mention of the bond MP as well. We don't go and as you refer to them, then I be bringing at the well of Parliament. So with their absence there, so you know. It go easy for later replace there, or you know, be hopeful for the new sets where they cap. No, there are some gaps that cannot be replaced. Mm. Of course, Dr. Kane Kolehim Keller has been one of the centrists. Mm. Are you always at the use that word? The unfortunately, until the last point, mm. we kind of alliance. And well, the decision of the people are that enough for return back, so they no votes for them. Whether or not because of the alliance or mm. not, that is a question for another day. But he has been one of the most profound debaters in the fifth parliament. Mm. And for me, Sam. Order the replacer. Unfortunately, nobody's replacing him or two other of his MPs. Mm. So the issue of the, the parliamentary debt of the NGC, we just limit them to Kanda Yumkela, but it's not about only Kanda Yumkela. We used to have Honorable Fode Mario Kamara, we used to have Titus Kamara. They are no longer there. And could it be as a result of the decision taken by their leader, Honorable mm. Yumkela? So that is gone. But the biggest, the biggest absence where we get fulfilled in the parliament mm -hmm. and the absence of the former leader of the opposition, Honorable Cherno Ramadan Majuba. He has been serving very long at the parliament day. It's not part of the law. It's a bit parliamentary best practice, not only in a salon. If you go to ECOWAS, he was the chairman of the legislative committee at ECOWAS. Mm -hmm. So this guy, he don't amass a lot of wealth. And I ask myself, why the APC not able for things say you need something MPs for institutional memory for keep? Now you not get, you not get honourable chairman of Madame Majuba. You not get honourable Ibi Kago. Of course, honourable Ibi Kago, it should not be part of the equation because he age and he health. They will see how he perform towards the end of. He not get much time because of him sick. But look at people like honourable Ajibola Manli Spain, honourable Hassan Sisse. Then a big falling, big gap down there for the opposition. And if you put her into juxtaposition with the government bench. I mean, as time, well, posterity and time will tell, but for me, I just say the government bench look get weight past the opposition bench. Because it's different when you're a leader than when you're an ordinary follower. Many people are understand the hype, honorable Abu Kagbo, honorable Abu Kagbo, honorable Abu Kagbo. He's a fine gentleman. He's very studious. He takes his job very seriously. But there is a difference when you are coming from behind and where the one can put you before. Parliament, a house, a house of dialogue, a house of integration. So I imagine you can sit down now the business committee, who say you get SLPP, you get one or two paramount chief and other people there, and you the can now for can only talk, not only for talk for yourself, but talk for your party and all those things. I think there is a need for some old ends. But you think that's honorable Daniel Koma. And that's the, that's the, that, that's the, that's for me that is the, the, the leading contender for, for the leader of the opposition position. Mm. Because looking at Viti Mamba Bangu. Is he getting honorable Charlie from, from Bombali? Cat, so yes, Cat's game, but I mean, I am not a fan, mm. and I covered her. She, yes, she had a certain committee. Mm. But if we have to look at performance, <laughs> what were, uh, uh, what were the, the things that she delivered in the world? Mm. You cannot compare none of them to honorable Daniel Kuruma. Honorable Daniel Kuruma, Naina the Bone Nuts Woods when it comes to lawmaking in the house. So of course, again, law don't put too much expectation on because it's a different way you're an ordinary lawmaker and you're a leader. 
You have to get the temperament. You have to manage the, 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 the opposition bench where the, the honorable Cherry Coco do very well. Because imagine, APC was in opposition, but they are still maintaining cohesion for the fifth parliament. Unlike the SLPP in the fourth parliament, where they manifest the themselves. So the leader, the new leader, opposition leader for APC in the parliament, if I for keep on a bench intact. Because if you see sell out man and then the APC is done in the legislature, because SLPP will need four votes from the APC for get a two thirds in terms of, let's say, constitutional review. And if you get, you know, we manage your house well, are they managing the for the sellout and you go to embarrass the opposition? So that is one. But also keeping the balance of managing the government bench. The government bench, as we see them over time, anything they want, they want some. So if you not get sense, you're not tactful for expose the weakness. One thing we want to say about the SLPP in parliament, they can only back down when they know it's the, it, 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 this two are not too enable for whitewash. Mm -hmm. Then they will back down. Of course, they have people who can keep the goal. Honorable Martin Numa. Very good at that. Honorable Solomon Singapore Thomas. But the good thing about them, if you want to take up an issue, wait for me also, well, wait for see. If you want to take up an issue, then you for sure, then, like, waiting on Abu Sharia Ramadan Majubi Basi, you cannot amend the constitution in ambush. Remember, under census. Okay. We'll, we'll make that as a general again for come back with amendments. Mm -hmm. So you need for OPI, very, very sharp. We'll, we'll come report. back to you, Melvin, quickly. Let me go online. As um, we producer in Jozo Alat, we say we get Honorable Mohamed Bangura on the phone now. Good morning, Honorable Mohamed Bangura. IV. Good morning, Honorable. Good morning, AIV. Yes, welcome to the program this morning. Um, Parliament Day resumed today, much, and um, uh, you you get for return of Parliament today. To the public, expects to see you in the well again today. Oh, yes, absolutely. I get for going to Parliament today. I will continue to do my job as a member of Parliament, as the people and vote for me in for go represent them and do the job we are required for do. You party poll statements um, last week say. Um, they don't institute investigation against you for um, where you go against them position for go na parliament. What's in your reaction to that? Well, I, I will not take uh, the public statement for granted, especially so as a lawmaker, they not write me it officially um, for put the issues into me. But um, if I would just um, respond from a general content, I would say, hey, fine, you know, until they don't put out the statement, they don't make the reasons them, until they get me a letter wherein they will state A, B, C, where I need for answer so far, now that I get for say on that issue. But I suppose you don't read the content of the letter. You, you, you perhaps go don't see them around and media houses them don't report them, including AYV Naya, you yeah. um, agree to uh, the concerns them where the party is and say you have been part of the meeting, you've been there at the meeting, you say they agree, say um, no member of parliament is not for go um, na the swearing in any ceremony, and you go against that. I was not part of the meeting. We um, allude to what we say. I was part of a meeting wherein they go briefly about the position of the party, and that. The position is final, as with Mikey say, you know, it will change us, it's circumstance. So, not a meeting where we and the party get for debate, not a meeting where we and the party get for relay the information to we. So, to me, I don't consider that as a meeting at all. I don't consider that to be a meeting. Okay, um, so... You've been making your points clear. Now that meeting, they say um, you go go to parliament, even though the party say um, you are not for going to parliament. You've been making that clear to the party. I will, in your I, will, I will tell you this, Lamrana. It is unfortunate we, the way the situation, the goal, like how it goes. So, in that meeting, as I say, I be the expect to get a one to a, a dialogue, a face to face dialogue with the party top leaders as to how come they come, with the, come out with the decision for we not to go to parliament. How come they come out with the decision we will not go to court, yeah? But that's that opportunity not ever given to me in that meeting. It was a one-man show in which he go, he talk about the press release, he talk about the position of the party, don't say, final. And that meeting, he not give me the opportunity at all. 
for raise the issues they need. Now, so the meeting closed. The, the, party, the, the Secretary General in the statement say, um, NAC, na the body where the decision binding, you know, and the decision not for go na parliament come out from NAC, and you as a member of parliament need for respect that. Um, is it that they go against the decision of um, uh, the, the National Advisory Council of your party? No, why would they go against the decision of the National Advisory Council Party? At the point where are they raised, when they make short decisions, you get for consider so many reasons. That is why you have to involve, especially the people that we get that decision for. We are elected members of parliament then, mayors, chairpersons of various municipalities. You want to come out to this law for say, then people have to all who are not vote for, they're not for parliament. It is just right for make we all, we the councils, members of parliament, who all proceed on and discuss. Perhaps in that meeting where we are in, we have a, a discussion, we forget something better. We for able advice. But the National Advisory Council, and this is not the first time, where they come out with decisions, we, at the end of the day, the end of our affect the party. At the end of our affect the party. Now that make at this point in time, me look at the decision, in no get head, in no get tail. I look at them left and right. Me for heaven's sake. Now the constitution empowered we for go parliament, for take the oath of office. If you the council now say we not for go, if we're able for advance argument, why we not for go? If we not go, what you go happy? But all of that, you know, in, 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 they, they, don't, they don't make a known to it. But as I say, I don't look forward to for receive a letter from the party office. Then I will able to address the issues there so thoroughly. But this all happened before the 5th July meeting, Honorable Mohamed Bangura. There was another meeting where we see members of parliament them, and um, mayors and chairpersons and sign and councillors and sign say um, they agree to the party in position, but we've not been seeing you sign. Um, and now that's the, now you know, all these stats. Uh, how will I get to that point? Did they not be engaged no, at that moment? No, 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 they tell you so. Then come out with the decision on the 30th of June. Shortly after the, the presidential election results, we held the meeting with them on the 5th of June. Poka affirmed that position where they don't take. So there is no consultation. Only the NAC now they decide on what move we should take. And I they check them on that. Even the, 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 the composition of the NAC. We make that decision was not, was not well seated. It was not well represented. You mean the a National Advisory Council will take the decision? We're supposed to deny this. But that is another debate for another time. Hmm. Let me read the final paragraph in the statement with the um, Secretary General Police. Is disobedience of the decision of the NAC constitutes a cause for strong disciplinary action? Under Chapter 6 of the APC Constitution 2022, does the Honorable Mohamed Bangura, um, along with the APC rank and file and the general public, is hereby informed that the party has initiated disciplinary action against Honorable Mohamed Bangura in line with the provisions of the APC 2022 Constitution? You get any fear, say, the party will take an action where um, go get you out of parliament? Oh, no, I don't get any fear. I don't get any fear. I tell you, Lambrana. What I do, I do um, in good faith. I do in the interest of the party. I do in the interest of the country. If they take any action against me, so be it. And that's what God say. But the fact of the matter is, me going to parliament is not in any way anti-party activity. Never, I not ever campaign against the party. I not ever talk about the party. I not ever do anything to undermine the party. If they say me go na parliament, now that make them go pull me is anti-party activity. They have to do a rethink, a rethink before they take the action. But if they, where do they take them? Who go, who go, who go, who go, who go cross that party?
Okay. Honorable Mohamed Bangra, now we don't, we don't move past all of this. Um, what in particular you will get for say, you know, to members of your party, because they don't elect to now, and now they, they will not for serve the people of this country, as you don't, don't go take the, to the oath of parliament. What do you go tell them particular people, and they will still refuse for go parliament? Oh, that, that's what I'm doing. I always tell them that the country is bigger than everybody. The country is bigger than the APC. It's bigger than the SLPP. And we, as lawmakers, should know that. Because we are the custodian of the laws of this country. The Constitution is very clear on the rules of members of parliament. We are a different and distinct in, in, in body from the executive. We know they work for President Bio. We know they get paid president, by President Bio. Yes, he is the president. But we are there to represent the people in terms of lawmaking. And when we make law, we they make law when we not they look party, we they make law for the interests of this country. So I call upon them for making them look at that provision that we are there as representative of the people, not the APC, not the SLPP, but the country. So the people of your constituents, what do you go tell them, say, in terms of, you know, your service delivery and the plans you go get, you know, for impact? Oh, I, I, always, I always say this to the people of your constituency, when I get when I hopes assured that me rep, go represent Nawel, me go in a parliament, I go advocate for development in the, in the, in, in the area, in, in Karine district generally, like the roads, the road from Makiri to Kamakui. It was in the last budget. Now it's now my duty, alongside with other members of parliament, for advocate and make sure see, the government indeed implement the, the construction of the construction of the road. And so many things them we carrying a district in uh, Ben forget now this new parliament. So many things them. We now the place will with the grow paper. With the growth tobacco, carrying a district. All of that don't die. B mainly because of poor road network, road network. So I will tell and say, this five years when I put me in a parliament, I will do what I can do within my powers for advance the aspiration and the desire of carrying people. Honorable, there is um, 771K, we in one of the things that we. Um Previous parliaments on the discourse about members of parliaments we cease for be uh, members of the political party that they can be replaced. Are you aware of it? Oh yeah, seventy seven K one it always said it always said the PR system, even the multi party system, first party post, it's always there. It's always there. So I'm fully aware of this that um, um, the party get the right for right for right parliament mm -hmm. that we withdraw this we we possibly member of parliament will we represent the party and parliament will look at them and see if it's visible for men and carry out what the party say so i always say look forward for the clear and impartial in interpretation of the rule of law when it comes to party discipline by uh, 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 of this nature so in case the party um, expel you or um, you cease for becoming a member of the APC, you don't think, say, that party in the law go um, be instituted against I, you? I, I, I will tell you, Lamrana, that, 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 that will be on, an unfortunate decision by the APC. Because knowing who that be and knowing the status in the country politically, it, it will not be good for the APC for many and lost somebody like me. But should they choose? to do that, I would just say it's a mistake. Are you, insinuating, are you insinuating that you join another political party? Of course, I'm, I'm a politician. Mm -hmm. You know, politics is, is, is what I do for a living. Politics is what I do in life. I'm not a musician. I'm not a footballer. I'm not a... I am, that's politics. I've been doing it for the past 15 years. So if you say you expel me, I'm liable. To form my own party, I'm liable 
to join another party. I'm liable for left politics and sit down as an ordinary man. But that three option is a new option. Honorable I want to Bam continue to play politics. Honorable Mame Bangwa, quickly as we round up with you. Um, the last time I talked to you, um, you mentioned that uh, this decision where you take, you get engagement, you talk to the former president and get engagement with other people in the party. Since after the, you take the oath of um, office in parliament, you don't get any engagement with Dr. Samoa or other leaders then within the party? No, I'm not getting any engagement with them because me, we the engage them for me to see how we bring stability and peace after the elections. Now that make I engage the former president, I engage Dr. Samura Kamara, I engage some other party stakeholders. But since the decision of me going to take the oath of office, I'm not there, I'm not engaging. First of all, President Kuruma, former president, was out of the country. So there is no linkage between me and them. But now I, I hope to continue for do, for engage them. For many see the reason for make who bring stability in politics. Okay. F finally, Honorable Mohamed Bangura, you don't tell we say the return of parliament today. There is this talk about um, um, the announcement of leadership and all that. You ready for taking any leadership role um, where uh, parliament will give you possibly? Um, let me, t let me tell you this, Lamara. Let me tell you this. Uh, um, me don't need a parliament for first for any leadership role. A leadership if they come up from God. Yes, in the absence of the opposition in parliament, and me being the only member of parliament sitting there. So the bulk rests on me. Yeah. But that will be on temporal position on uh, a situation. Temporarily. Temporarily. As soon as the opposition ready for good parliament, they take the seat. I will turn down any position we are not all on their behalf to them. So let nobody get them wrong for say me at the parliament for get position or at the parliament, I go parliament for take position. Not to that I go there for at all. I'm a content young man. I believe say what you got what you get for you, you get up for you. Yeah? If you announce as minority leader today, will you um, accept it? I tell you, Lamrana, just like what I, be, what I tell you just now. I say anything will happen with me, it will be on temporal measures. Yes, I will accept it. In the absence of the other APC MPs them, I will accept it. As long as they come to parliament and take their seat. I will tell Mr. Speaker that we are at the relinquish back this position. Give it to the party. Let them decide who is the leader in parliament. Are you looking forward to um, your colleagues joining you today? You they look forward to um, any, any one of the other elected MPs and all reach I, out I, to I you? Tell you I tell today? you, Labrana, for every day we sleep and wake, we look forward to new things. As I wake this morning, I look forward to the the colleagues that were able to join me at any time. Okay. Honorable Mohamed Bangua, um, thanks for joining us this morning. You're Definitely welcome. we'll continue this conversation as we get forget um, a live broadcast from Parliament today. Um, as um, after the oath taking Parliament, um, they continue today and again for be live on AYV this morning. Melvin, you've, hmm. you've heard from Honorable Mohamed Bangua. <clears throat> any position we come. They will take on temporarily and um, go ready for and over and back to the party leadership for leader and choose who that will be the leader. I, I think listening to Mohamed Bangura, he seems to be well advised on the situation. He's very tactful. Even when he describes for Connor, I mean, he, he waiting to talk. And it, I think once two, he don't succeed for do, now that they play this card of my people. Mm -hmm. And it's the same card being played now by the APC themselves that all oh, the voices of our people was not reflected. So this is not, not politician and they're themselves, not they inside themselves. So whatever decision, that would be for them, but they should count the cost. There are two costs there to count. The political cost, you write the speaker, you go for politically removal from parliament. The legal cost, if you are going to use 771K, what are you going to tell the courts? What 
actual. Because it's ambiguous as to what constitutes anti-party activities mm -hmm. in the Constitution. And APC, never forget, say Section 35. They are also a subject to se Section 35, to which says political parties exist to shape the political willingness of the people. What if somebody, not to APC self, somebody will just not ordinary vote, away will vote, say they vote for APC, say me this decision will then take. But the fact that my district is not represented, I'm going to challenge them at the high court. They should be counting those courts because you're talking about disenfranchising people. Let me not forget that the all mark of democracy in an election. Yes, the election be that as it may, but we are in here taking a decision to deprive people from a district from representation. It has got legal implications too. And me, I look forward for some clever civil society or ordinary salon policy, no more way votes when other parties are because if you're a party, you take the issue, it becomes political. This has, has got to do with the social contract between a political party and the people. So when you are altercating that, have you consulted the people? Was there any consensus? I mean, for me, this is what I talk about earlier on. Would you be surprised if you see APC return, members of parliament return to the world today? With, for, what I see right now, I don't see willingness on both sides. I don't see the, the negotiation, the yield fruit. And you're waiting on every one of my talk. When you listen to the undertone of that, it's ever to you say, there are negotiations, there are dialogue, but it collapsed. So what is responsible for that? Who is arrogant? Who is adamant? Until we get that thing and they sort it out, I'm afraid. So for me, the optics not look positive. And if APC they go now, wait till they go with. This, the, 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 the abstinence already don't take away from the kind of clout we don't forget. Because already, they are one of them, Mohamed Bangura, don't, what I would say, it don't muddy the water. But to me, to the situation, go day at the end of the day, then come. And that is between Marabio and, and, and Eskuma and Samoa Kamora. We will talk here for 50 years. If they are not willing to give and take and do political upgrading, it's not going to solve. But again, I'm sure there's not a thing can make thing be. Thing will, thing will be where the two sides will see the need, say this we need that. Mm. But how do we have to wait, say, thing on point? I said it yesterday to some experts I was talking to at Bookfish. I said it's better to consolidate peace than to build peace. Peace consolidation is easy. You know, you know what we begin to say, can do DDR, can do uh, 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 reconciliation, can look at old dial. No, you just building it, it's there. When you're consolidating, but when you are building it, you are taking it from scratch, and you can only build something that has been broken. So we want to, for one for we say the political peace broke, for our maker, it's up to the political leaders, but they must count the cost. Nobody wins in this current political statement, not the APC, not the SLPP. And except somebody who wants to say in Alex Salon, I will pretend say, okay, it's not okay for the peace and democracy. And over and over, Mohamed Bangura, they make mention that we will look at the greater good of, uh, of the country, Salon. Mm -hmm. However, if they don't go again today, it will be another, you know, uh, another loophole. So, you know, over the years, you don't cover parliament, you don't come out from different, different mm -hmm. sectors. And this, again, a very new thing for, for mm -hmm. make they go through as a mm -hmm. And So, moving forward, what's in this tell we, are we going to a positive growth or will they, will they retrogress? No, this is not, it's not, it's not a steep reversal in a democratic gains. Mind you, sir, you know, move from what they call a rubber stamp parliament. Mm. We move so much so to a progressive parliament. And now West Africa, we are few among countries we get progressive parliament. All of a sudden, after election, Poloka decline and reverse 360 degree back to a one or, or almost a one party parliament. It's not good for, for we governance. And some of we expert the system for the go abroad, some of these things are gonna own them. And mind you, there is this second, these are just the first part of the battle. We have the bigger battle with the international community also. And until we sort with domestic politics, who's much we'll get for we begin to talk to the West and, and, and Europe on uh, so this thing is hugely consequential. And not but not, the political climate is not stable, it's not peaceful, it's not cohesive, and it's not good for development. You will get all the development plans that you aid. But if political stability and cohesion are there, it's going to be impeded. Quickly, uh, before we can go to the next guest, we don't join me in the studio. I want to ask, um, you know, what in you, our parliament get for look like today? You know, the last year we've been there, the Mohamed Bangura, when the Mohamed Bangura comes we get a loud applause from uh, even members of parliament from the other side, being go meet them, they shake here and take photos with them, and the people themselves, the strangers, them, all been the clapping, uh, you know, for them. Um, it, Perhaps he might be the only person coming in today again. What's in the atmosphere therefore look like? Well, just the same. One party driven parliament or atmosphere. We see from the gallery and mostly SLPP supporters them the day day. Unlike which we used to see before. Like now one half size self, you more see APC then they then with the ala ala to themselves, you will not let you will see them do exchanges. And I keep the parliament vibe and the balls alive in the parliament. But we are all just for one side. I mean 
Again, I look forward to how the government can set the, the seating accommodation. Of course, always, always on the right is for the government. Mm -hmm. But looking at the number of MPs or SLPP, get, I'm afraid some of them get for the seat even near to some to some, some APC. They get more number. They get more number. And that mm -hmm. number in a big, big strength way, I believe, say, for people to enjoy the parliament from the start. Because we are you get that overwhelming number day. But yet still, you know, get all what it takes to get a three third. That number, if it don't, be, if it don't be an interesting watch or look ahead. But now, that again, we cannot even, we cannot even. There was a popular um, permanent chief member of parliament. By cool. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, it was one of those people we uh, most times, um, you know, be the come in between mm. when there were mm. issues. Mm. You, you go for miss Sam? Of course, we go miss by cool, by cool. But again, me, I'll be all I'm high esteem until that day where I see the chair of the APC convention and put lock on. Now I say, hey, this part, so now party picking, bing, bing. Mm. You know, that speaks to the broader issue of the role of parliament chiefs in parliament. I hear somebody talks, the parliament chief then will serve as the second fiddle to the opposition. It's impossible. Apart of by coup, when me sabi, we want to say we can talk liberally. Mm. Whose parliament chief will get a mind if we go talk against government? I mean, you don't think the worst thing you do, the one that the party MP, then the, then the, then the back then the you parliament chief, you might lose your staff. So let me not fool yourself. There is no respite in, 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 this, in this quagmire of a one party parliament. No respite, no day. One member insists if you say you want to challenge the issue on, on a liberal front or on, or, or, on an objective front, you have to find and difficult with the SLPP. And mind you, its protection will be coming from the SLPP. Mm -hmm. So technically, it is a semi government venture. Okay. Because, it's, I mean, if you say you want to take SLPP head on, say critique them, give them bonus to business, they say, eh, now go left here, if I do right to you, you can't go first. So even in itself, if I count the cost also, between in party relations and that of the parliamentary relations, because yes, for now you go get the support, but what if you have to begin speak for the people? Let me take some messages, Zola. Let me see. We get we get a lot of uh, messages on we uh, Facebook page this morning. A lot of people and they follow the program. Um, Ronald Beresford, the first one I would take is say this guy is there for himself. He's a product of Sierra Leone's political dispensation, either from the two major parties. I'm not surprised at his stance. Is mm. different uh, from Alpha Khan, Victor Fu, etc. Um, Abu Bakr Conte, they say, why we as individuals are not talking about how it started and just talking about how to solve the problem at hand now? Mambu Mina says, Mohamed Bangura chose the country constitution above party constitution, which is patriotism at its peak. Political parties are showing on patriotic uh, um, ideas they have towards the country and the people. The country should be put forward. Arun Baba. Um, Kagbo Abib says, Mohamed Bangwa should understand that if he had composed himself well, he would have better future in the APC party than any other party in the country. Ronald, they say, unless this government does more in reaching out to the opposition, this ampas puts the government's plans into jeopardy. The economy needs urgent attention, and the government alone cannot address then, that threat. And we know our only hope is reaching out to donors. Uh, Patricia Komawa um, say, well done, Honorable Mohamed Bangwa, I applaud you for taking a stand against bigotry. Gassi Mufofana, they say, thank you, Mohamed Bangwa, for your statesmanship you displayed. Eddie Grant say, na man die, man better. Na Mohamed Bangwa be minority leader, so na fire. They saw the one, they say, if we have moved on as a country, please let's move on and forget about politics and put Sierra Leone force. And uh, the final one I'll take is... Um, Michael Joseph Kanu, one party in MP, in MPs, of MPs in Parliament will not send a good message out there. We should not be proud of it at all. Our democracy is at stake. Um, the final one for me is say why we as individuals... Okay, I've already read that one day. They will, as for the carry on with the program, um, and we'll have a leave from IGR, don't join with this morning. And we'll continue the conversation on peace and national cohesion. Good morning and thank you for joining me. Good morning. Good uh, morning, viewers. Yes. So a few moments before you, you, you come, would they talk about you know, the status of politics right now as you know, members of the APC then you know, refuse for going at the well of parliament and mm -hmm. how all landed they, they you know, disrupt the peace and national cohesion and the way for move democracy. But I want to draw your attention you know, to the People's Manifesto we will be launched and how some of the you know, indicators there don't reflect now in real lives post-election. Thank you very much. So, whilst um, a lot of people in concern about 
the opposition going to parliament. We're more concerned about doing their work job with them go parliament one day because I'm not saying for good day. And we don't do a lot of parliamentary tracking and we publish one today mm -hmm. where they show say we'll look at the last parliament it is see say there was major concern about the work of both SLPP and APC in our parliament. So it's not really how far you stay out, but where you go in actually do the work with the unions they elect you for. And I believe say that the common call, the clarion call where they come up from everybody. We we see say um, I, I don't think there is there should be any problem. One of one of the things we really find for a lot of Australians just dismiss. Now the fact say we not for set precedent mm. where somebody lost election, you talk say I know they go court and they take to the streets, you bastardize and dismiss all institutions. Of course, the, there are good legitimate grounds of the, the protest the way APC gets. For example, they talk say there's lack of transparency. And it's all reflected in international uh, observers then, uh, statements then. We need for adjudicate that. The more you take them and they to court, including your evidence, then, then you go able to partner now with civil society for law, put pressure on the court for let the court be fair. So I think, say, but we know we'll talk, say, law come on at the court, let's go to the street. I don't think that, I don't think, say, any Israel Union for actually encourage that. You know why? Because there will be a time where APC go win election. If NGC, SLPP, you talk, and they take the thing and they, and they go to court, if I, after six months, you say, come on a power, we cannot have a country. So, now that make it always fine for let we know, say, what we go into elections, you they go for two outcomes. One outcome, now for win, the other outcome, now for loss. And if we be prepared for both, how we handle both is different from one, maybe from year in, year out. And let I just take part, uh, listeners there through, like, for example, what happened in 1996. We, elections have never been perfect. And no election at the world, no democracy, no perfect at the world. In 1996, Je James Jonah went up with the Electoral Commission and he actually put President Jan Kaba down. And the main challenger went up with John Kerry for smart. It took 100,000 votes. The rebels in the shoot, the war in the region. It took 100,000 votes from John Kerry, uh, President Jan Kaba. He say, I see say there is overvoting in an area. Again, to Kerifa Smart. Tijan Kaba still win. Kerifa Smart, he congratulates her. But I tell the type of people in the congratulating election, then get tears in their face. Not for say they smile. In 2007, five years on, um, Solomon Berra, um, he, he lost the election. 477 polling stations. We amount to 250,000 votes. We are 11% of the total results. Pre predominantly in Solomon Berra, in your stronghold, we are cancelled. And we extrapolate that vote today, now in your area, it was about 16%. He had tears in his face. Then the JRM, if they go now the swearing in, they go attend President Kuruma's swearing in, they say congratulations. In 2012, President Bill did the same. In fact, when they do the recount, mind you, in 20, 2002, Madam Christiana Top never had the authority for cancel any votes by law. In, in, in authority we've been getting now for let people then let it count the vote, anybody will feel aggrieved, then they go court. In 2012, the same thing happened. In fact, at that time now, they don't repeal the law, they don't get authority now. So whether they do the recount, uh, places like uh, Connor, Honorable Philip Tete Matondone, he actually gets in, in seats back because what you will see, say, the R, RFF forms them, mm. the results form them, and we'll be the inside the box, a different. So, in fact, so you get challenges of overvoting, you get challenges of political parties actually forging RF reforms. So, our elections have never been perfect. In the context of that voting, the Nine Christian Top say, um, they announced the results. They announced the results. Then, two days, President Bill being, 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 being angry, but after two days, he actually go to, with the body of Christ, uh, to, uh, President Kuruma, he congratulates him. See, your presidency is not in contention. I think, say, if we don't get now a new phase of election denial, and, and at least in the biggest challenge that we'll get. So, not only Sierra Leone, um, after, as I talk, Donald Trump no one day congratulate Joe Biden. So, not to just alone one. So, this thing I want to talk about election denial phase, if, if this global age of populism, because now, now uh, we know they see much more of statesmanship. Mm. 
with it look more to populism and people and they appeal to their bases than being leaders. When they say you're a leader, now when you, the people in the talk say, no, now this one to say, no, this is not good for our collective interest. I'm going to move away from. If President, if, if Vice President Solomon Berra be listening to his supporter then, enough for them to congratulate. If you be listening to SLPP, enough for them to congratulate Dr. Uh, uh, Anders by Kroma. In 2002 as well, we Anders by Kroma lost. He turned around and congratulated uh, uh, Ahmed Tijanka. But you know what happened? The relationship between him and Dr. Ahmed Tijankaba improved. They make him it become one of the most influential parliamentarians, heading a number of committees. So there is, it behoves with leaders for show leadership, not to follow worship. You know, we talk say no because I get somebody who based abroad, he go harass me through social media by making I cannot be a leader. You have to be a leader. Uh, Andrew, um, we, in all of this, you don't talk about the whole way uh, moral guarantors they play. You know, like the body of Christ with um, um, Solomon Bear and all of that. You know, it, it, we don't talk about dialogue. Uh, people um, from the opposition, Mohamed Bangua and others, don't call on the president, the former president, and even Dr. Samuel Kamara for a dialogue. The body of the interreligious council as well. But we are still, they get the stalemate about, like you say, people still agree and not accepting the results. Are we at a point where? Um, we don't get people them for actually come between with political leaders them and bring them together for get a dialogue and understand that the interests of the country pass everybody in, in personal interest? Of course, you know, dialogue can normally be way leadership that they fail. Way leadership they succeed, you know, actually need dialogue because mm -hmm. everybody they know say the country interest is there above everything. Unfortunately, at stake now are uh, 8 million people mm -hmm. where their concerns are not recognized. So we come out inside this election where you get uh, some groups, like for example, New, they publish a report where it's today, so most of the questions that are raised have not been answered around methodology, around um, uh, this, for example. So you, we see, say, if not, not all of the 1999 opposition not hold on to. And people they don't know the implications where it talks about a country in democracy, especially a country like we own will rely largely on external donors. If it talks with, with democracy, get problem. It actually tell external donors don't invest, and then kind of situation that they even get the possibility of sliding back the country into chaos. Because for its country, we get high youth unemployment. Mm -hmm. It talks look, this place should not be attractive for private sector investment. Then at the risk, and you know what? In some of we. We get with colleagues them uh, within you. Uh, we actually respect them, and I think say they be done. They do some fine work. One of the things they would ask really, fine law critique, within at the 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 accuracy of your questions. I, I did in research. If you they do seven hundred and forget about the statistical questions, accuracy of statistical questions, we they able to answer at all because there are questions around margin of error, you know, um, uh, level of confidence, we not really reflected. And by the way. So the NDI even talks say this is not an experiment. There is no way America will do election. Then after the election, somebody they I don't do a survey of the under they vote. That result they is wrong. Who's America will take treat that seriously? Say I don't do a survey. But let us, let's even assume it's right. Where they do they recruit workers? I don't recruit a lot of research staff. Where you recruit Boko of them at the southeast can be SLPP. Boko of them at the northwest can be APC. That's how our politics is. So if law say 5% of them are the Southeast or 5% are the Northwest, they become so enthusiastic about their party, they, they give you wrong figures. We know the insider box, they, that is data they wrong. And because of that, the fluidity of the context, how fast you want to an, announce that result, they, you know they get time for validate. When I see say IGR pool one poll with the talk say, we get 56%. Mm -hmm. We took a lot of time going back, facts checking, verifying. Nobody, I know I assigned you to number to Rubane Road, Namakini, for interview eight households. They come back to me say, no, four of those households saying that they vote for SLVP. I'll query that data. I will just need to look back at election trends. But that particular polling area, they are going to send another person. New not being get an opportunity. Not that. So, ten, so what would they look back if I don't know what did we get wrong? 
because in our final months. But, but, but the issue about data and irregularities with the election is not only with new. Of, obviously, of, obviously, know, obviously, they not do PV, they not do PVT. The, 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 the issue with all the observers and the race, they raise two things. They raise things around transparency in the talent process, mm -hmm. and of course, that is legitimate. And we, we, they even call on the electoral commission. Then concerns and the way APC they raise, let those concerns be addressed. If they talk, say, publish polling station by polling station results, it's our results, it's not yours. Publish them. You know, but one of the things we, we hold on to, everybody across the country, they talk, say, uh, including you, uh, they talk, say, President Bill actually led in the election. I think, say, the problem we, the only issue we you get, way different from the rest of other people, is say, no, enough of that win first round, mm -hmm. the election. So nobody in the talk, say, uh, uh, Samora Kamara was above uh, President Bill. So I'm uh, sorry, I'm able to talk about the, the People's Manifesto. Yeah, you, you, you can't talk, you can't <laughs> yes. talk about um, but, but because we talk about Parliament. But let me bring um, Patrick Sandy in quickly. Yesterday, um, this all got to do with <coughs> governance and um, um, accountability. Yesterday, the ACC uh, put out a statement reminding people um, we the continuing our government, the one we don't left, and the new one they really come for declare them, them, them assets. Um, so I want to take you through the process um, quickly and how we to make this very important for accountability and the fight against corruption. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, you see, Lamrana, as you rightly say, this is very, very important uh, for the fight against corruption because when you even look at uh, that section of the act, they talk about integrity in public life. So the ACC will get the mandate, the statutory mandate, for ensure say, public officers they declare their income assets mm -hmm. and liabilities. See, I'm fitting that this is but right for let the public know, say, therefore declare public in the sense the public officers. So we they urge them and we they remind them. But then the amendment will happen to the Act of 2008, actually reform the regime the asset declaration regime. And therefore, you will find out that specifically now, we will take the public office asset through for no if at all, when you know declare, what will be the penal code. As it was before, it was quite a long process. But like for instance, with the administrative sanctions. So but like for those where they take a public office newly, we will tell and say three months as provided in the act before do the declaration. Of course, that are undertaking the oath because you get to go through parliamentary approval. You don't know if they approve you or not for those who they come in. The one then where they exit, get to do exit declaration. We shall sure say when also you take up office, you do the declaration. And now the amendment make provision for biannual declaration and you be the do down the wise in public office or you can even update you as a declaration. So and then now you be left. We also need that because at the end of the day, we will be able to do an analysis, a verification of those assets and know actually what you had before taking public office. What do you get wise in public office and as well what you, 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 you left as you are now going out of public office as the case may be. The one that as you say where they continue, it is as if you are continuing. Next year is the declaration year. So you can as well do that declaration. Then for those coming in for do fresh declaration. And the ACC don't become very clear as well. If somebody not do the declaration, if you come into office, you not do the declaration three months, then we will give directives because the amendment makes that provision. We do the directives to the accountant general, the HRMO, or any authorities so necessary for let them withhold your salary. The same for those with the left. So the ACC, they go through this very seriously, which I mean with the follow on through. Mm -hmm. And then we also tell the people and say they get the opportunity. You know, they will now do paper based declaration. You can do what you call online declaration. So you can even go on the internet, go www.anticorruption.gov.sl, side away they tell you, say, declare assets. Declare your assets. You click the, once you get the NASIT number and the other information, then you can go ahead. But once you had declared before, and now you want to exit declaration, I shall say it could be an easy process for you. So those are the kinds of things where we believe, say, the public needs for understand, mm. and especially those where they come in to public office, those newly appointed and those newly elected. Because once you take up public office, 
now a responsibility for the declaration. If you know to so after three months and there is no extension of that by the commissioner in writing, then it means you don't fall out. Mm -hmm. They can send to you a default notice that are 14 days that you have not declared and the deadline for declaration had expired. That they urge you for declare. After the 14 days elapsed, you don't still declare, there we go kicking now the provision for withholding of salaries. So what's in them people are they declare? <coughs> what's, in, what's in are the declaration? Now the income, them property, they with them being get, the money we then get, and or then they declare like everything, every asset we then get. No, well, I get specific things. Then. Yeah, definitely. You get specific things where mm. you get for declare. Firstly, of course, you they put in your information, whether it is biodata or something about yourself, the institution where you they work, the grade where you day and the salary will you get for receive monthly. And then annually, of course, that are every 12, 12 months, what you do is. Then you they put information on picking them with they below 18 years. You put something on your spouse, not to the asset of the spouse. Mm -hmm. Then you begin to talk about, these are, we talk about tangible properties, these are mm -hmm. assets. They talk about the bank accounts that you hold, and the different accounts them, and how much are in those accounts. You get for that, that's why the, the information in the asset declaration form are really held confidential. Mm. So if you put all of that day, the different accounts that we hold, whether they are local, whether they are foreign, and then you talk to all, so you come to assets. What do you mean now? Assets, these are like, you have vehicles, you get buildings, you get land. These are the immovable, then you get the movable assets. You also get for indicate that in the form, because provision day for all of that. Then you also further get for talk about shares. If you have shares in companies or other places, you talk about those. You get securities in other places, you talk about that. You also get for talk about mortgages. You see, you also give a provision, I think we talk about liabilities. So if you get debts and other things, you indicate that as well. Then you talk about other sources of income. If you know somebody where you don't only depend on the salary where they pay you, but for instance, you are in business, you are in consultancy, you do rent houses, you get land, you do cattle rearing, you do mining, you do a lot of sort of things. These are other sources of income. You indicate that, that they are also means of getting the money. So at the end of the day, you put all of that together. And in fact, if there are joint ownership, sometimes some people then get joint ownership of property. Some people they don't inherit something from a family and then they head them. You get for indicate. Because at the end of the day, <coughs> when you get for do, um, Updating of your assets, for instance, there are times you don't dispose of certain assets where you don't declare earlier. So they therefore know the circumstance will make you dispose that property. You are just the head, for instance, if they talk about a, 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 a land or parcels of land, but you don't dispose of it, you don't sell it, you don't get the money. You not be the head, you not shiba. So the next declaration in order day. So somebody needs to know what has happened at that stage with that land deep and the earlier declaration in order for this other one. So all those steps will you take for dispose of that property, that is why you get for Putande, how you got those properties, what is not the type of property, the ownership, if not joint ownership, or if not you want to get them, all of those things have to be clearly stated, mm -hmm. at least in the form or where they fill up. Okay. And in fact, we have made it so, if you like, easy for people. Initially, they take them to JP for sign, commissioner of codes, now you can just affirm. And then you do because some people they say, Oh, we know they can go to JP, we pay five thousand, we did this and that, or ten thousand because they also require money. No, that is out of it. So we they encourage, twice with the urge, we they encourage them as well. Go on the internet, go online, and then get the form and then do the declaration. If you have any time, we get the asset declaration unit, they will provide you the support. We get the IT unit at the ECC, they give you the support. So, but we really want compliance level to be high in this regard. Mm -hmm. If to an investigation, I go for fair not say, you know, some people under declare because we are all humans, we'll take them into consideration. What thing will be, you know, the next step by this? It, it, it's an offense. Okay. That is, we, we talk about mm -hmm. false declaration. Mm -hmm. Under declaration means false declaration. So, you can't under declare <coughs> and you can't also declare in anticipation. Because some people then they then go can't begin put this on ten I get for can get motor car. I not get an hour. So that is why on the date of the declaration, I make you the affirm, you they put the date. So if you do that, you they commit an offense. And if that is known, 
for being false declaration, just as failure to declare, you get for pay a fine of not less than 30, of course, million old loans, 30,000 new loans, and then you go to jail for not less than two years. I see you offer coming and yeah, because the, inside the people's manifesto now some of the things mm, that the people then call for. Definitely. Mm. So um, it not, it's not to just the citizens' manifesto in the previous one. Yeah. Asset <laughs> declaration was <laughs> asset publication. Yeah. Because people should not just account to the ACC, mm. they should account to the people of Sierra Leone. So and as you say the ACC they talk to the accounting to us. Mm -hmm. But in the interest of full disclosure. They should account to the citizens of Sierra Leone. If you go now, I just say Siri, I want to know the net worth of Barack Obama. The tell you saying that this is not Barack Obama worth. And I think in the spirit of uh, transparency, accountability, and state effectiveness, one of the reasons why they push for the anti-corruption in 2004, uh, not just for <coughs> stop corruption, um, but for make leaders lead and become less distracted by waiting and want personally, was a leader, not to just president, mm. across the board. But, but forget more interest in public work, in, in, in serving citizens. I know say we can too often be, be held by this argument, say, not the law, not the law. Uh, but I, me, they really encourage the Anti-Corruption Commission for champion that advocacy, for change that law. Yeah. If the law and the whole way, let us change the law. Mm -hmm. Um, we had an opportunity four years ago to we'll repeal the Anti-Corruption Commission. And when I talk about for declare sensitive information of citizens, to citizens, yeah. like for example, how many picking that you get? Yeah. Uh, if somebody don't go born picking a street, <laughs> not that we want. Yeah. Not even the bank details, the bank account, but just that person they work. Yeah. At this time, yeah, now be two billion in income. We the end, now three billion or five billion. Yeah. Now be 20 motorcar, but we the end, now now 50 motorcar and end. <laughs> Just that. So the public will know and they will check what's in the person exactly. coming in and what's in exactly. the ground. Exactly. Particularly, I ask this. Like you say, yeah. we had an opportunity with the president as well. President Bill has been somebody who has been, um, you know, give um, assurance <coughs> in declare assets. But yeah. when it comes again for the declaration of the assets, it comes back to the law. The argument was the law not provide for them. Mm. It, it can feel for them or not them, but the law not provide for them. You know, how do we get the public to understand that this person we come for salary. Now this amount of value come with, and now this is the go out with. Now we get people already left government. We don't know what they come with or what they left with because everything is just to the Anti-Corruption Commission. Well, you see, as we just say, the law make that provision. But in addition, as uh, my brother Andrew also the state, he's a civil society person and I'm sure the advocacy will hide him. But why is the law, they say, you only declare to the ACC. But honestly speaking, except because people want it maybe to go out at the time you declare. But even when the documents are with the ACC, you just get for you certain steps before you access them. Of course, it is still the law. Mm. Because if you go to court, for instance, a judge can ask for somebody's declaration to be made public. Why to that can't person. we have a system where the ACC see, can, can say this is the words of the person? They no, well, that in is, terms of transparency, that is, then at the ACC well, website. That, is, that is where now I they say the law not give you that provision. But so, which on this time, so I, I want, if, if, why if, is the if, ACC? Mm -hmm. This is the People's Commission. This is something the commissioner has been saying. This is the People's Commission. When they try to um, you know, ensure accountability and transparency. Why is the ACC itself, like Andrew said, is not pushing for that amendment? So the public have to understand, say, this policy where they take public office, now this value they come with, and when he or she is living, now this value left with. So the public understand if... Uh, when last the no, ACC okay. indict anybody for unexplained wealth, how many people has... Uh, no, no it, it has taken some time. But the point is, you know, when you say the ACC is not pushing, the ACC can push. But the amendment issue has to do with advocacy and the parliament, mm. my brother. You see, you, you go find out, say, ACC, when it don't do that, the, even the amendment, there are a lot of things in the amendment when it gets as well into the world. But that is a different matter altogether. We're not going to get to discuss a lot of that. Mm. But what I am saying is, as an institution, ACC, we are always and ready to and determined for see the right thing happen for the people of this country. So now I make and they say, as the law they provide, now so we they go. 
But if for any reason they say they are changing it, we definitely will work with it because at the end of the day, it helps us a lot. And I make Adi also say the asset declaration, yes, at the moment we see and say it's restricted, especially to members of the public. But if for any reason, and they still say this, a member of the public or anybody want an information in that asset, you will get it. But you see, sometimes, Lamrana, people knocking one for move a little bit. What do I mean a little bit? For use the existing laws. For instance, you have access to right of information. Mm. There are certain times a day, for instance, ACC, what would they do press release? Will they, you know, for strategic reasons, will they say, no, this name with all our members, sometimes you are talking about, oh, would I then pay money to this chance we build it? Until later, we have to say it. Why can somebody not say, for instance, we get right to access? Go to the access, write ACC, provide this information for you. No, Mr. So, Mr. so Mr. what no, I am Mr. saying, no, listen, no, listen, no, listen what I am saying, there are times, let us we use We want existing, deterrent, deterrent. We want existing, no, let us use waiting but, at but the, again, the, again, the existing infrastructure ACC, and do it. When the ACC wanted the law to be amended, the mm. ACC pushed for it. They went to parliament, we get a law, we, a new law with the new commissioner. You know, that is what I think and we, say, uh, we need um, the tariff. No, you see, you, see, see, you may not say all here, this is not a public. No, no, you're talking no, to the public. No, yes, this is a public institution. No, no, what I am saying, no, when, it law, secrets, when, it law, law, when it comes to the law, no, no, <laughs> when it comes to the law, in terms of all what you put, <laughs> it's not all what they pass. Mm, okay. That is the fact. Lamarna, La I am, we, 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 so we have been tracking ACC through the Afrobarometer. The ACC have been doing very well on the Afrobarometer. And it just say, then score will really increase. The AC score will just stay high out there if they add this to the agenda. You, you actually create a deterrent. Because when they talk about corruption prevention, there is no better way for prevent corruption if right at the front end, mm -hmm. you don't talk, say, this is the deterrent, this is, this is no-go area, so there is zero tolerance. Mm -hmm. So I think, say, we actually need, it should not just be a civil society agenda. Mm -hmm. It should be at the core of the anti-corruption strategy mm -hmm. for say anybody will come in the net. I mean, it's talk about one million or two, one million people in declaring assets. You get around two, three, four hundred people. Eh? We focus on them and then they the one they willing to deal with eighty percent expenditure, eighty percent revenue. Yeah. How would they make sure say they one they deal with we drag them into the net to talk say law focus asset declaration reforms on the wire. Law left then teacher then teacher Teacher no need for public assets, right? Because it get little yeah. uh, effects on the economy. So now that they really, that for build broader advocacy. If we do that one day, I think so we will tick the box with the public in a big way. And we will take can I, 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 but teacher no need declare Let, 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 we get something. Yes, we don't get a situation where we get the ACC and parliament, you know, there is that blood about, um, uh, especially the Auditor General's report. Mm. We've got those situations. Even though recently we see them, they collaborate. But we get that situation, and they would get the power for all people and accountable with the audit report and all of that. Mm. From the Parliament perspective, you know, you don't cover Parliament for, for a very while now. Um, how do we address this issue about asset declaration and holding people accountable when they name go in an audit report? Firstly, when we make laws, we look at existing laws how then synchronous, how then fit, or how then they at distance and harmonize them. In that case, there's a need for harmony. Firstly, Parliament gets much power than the ACC. Parliament is a creature of the Constitution. ACC is created by a secondary legislation. So where you talk about the ACC doing more of the work, then it means saying that because we get a weak public accounts committee. I totally agree with the ACC on this. But one thing we will not need for forget ACC, this act will then get so not to the self change out. I was there at the Bank of Salon Complex. Yes, they were getting technocrats the same way they work with the draftsman's office at the Ministry of Justice and Attorney General's office. Here is the point. The point is, until and unless we political leaders, they're willing for showing, ACC, civil society can make the loudest of noise. If they are not willing, they are not going to do it. There we are pitched of on that, that assets should be made public. But when a company, when they're going to committee stage, he's absolutely right. Lawmakers from across the aisle, they agree, say, no, this will not make us sue. Mm. So SEC might want it, civil society might want it, but if the politicians are not ready for it, they're not going to get it. And mind you, not to ACC themselves change their law, not the executive through, through other arms, through other related bodies. So I think we should focus our attention on 
One, the president, if he's willing, of course, the justice ministry will be willing. And of course, ACC will not have any op option but to just follow through. So that is the bigger picture, willingness of our political <laughs> leaders. No, I, I disagree because normally people, people and they always get the government to they deserve. So actually, the, if we get a broad coalition between civil society and the anti-corruption, that noise at the top, but that noise was never loud. Mm. You, you understand that? Eh? Mm. We actually need to get a loud noise for say, this is what the Indians want. What they talk about the Citizens Manifesto. We find now, the, one of the things that we come up from the Citizens Manifesto, where they give bigger legitimacy now to the Anti-Corruption Commission, they talk to say, now this want. Let we develop joint, I, I take your point that there is need for political will, but political will can be generated because uh, too often, we not can get leaders that we can for go against what these citizens they want. So now I make it fine, let we, let we, left with politicians then, they always want for do what they want. But now we citizens get for demand standards, we demand better. And then that change they go on day. If you look at the New Direction Manifesto in 2018, page 56 exactly, they talk say, I will make my asset public. Mm -hmm. It's a manifesto commitment. So, yeah. But, but it not come to pass. And then I just been get the, the um you know the consortium then been mm. gets the commitment from mm. the presidential candidates in twenty eighteen yes. for yes. openly declare <laughs> say then go then commit say then go declare their assets. And we had that opportunity then. Yes, for yes. that was the time we had the amendment of the ACC um, act and, and, and law. You mm. you know, that was an opportunity for let we get that and make them open and public say Almost they can't reach, we go understand saying that you value this. Like what team they buy player? And go no almost and they buy the player and almost and they sell the player. <laughs> but now people are declaring their assets and we like I asked earlier, waiting at the turnout with um, you know, especially people away they exit, people yeah. away they left for understand waiting at them in car with and waiting and they left with. You know, certainly the the compliance rate has been very good um in terms of the exit, even the entrance uh, declaration. Um we don't get compliance. And um, as maybe some people need for also understand, not everybody they declare. Then we could mm -hmm. focus on the politically exposed persons, mm -hmm. what would they talk about, and the financially exposed persons. Mm -hmm. So that means we narrow the scope. But for exit, you know, say you get for really urge them. But the amendment we don't now make, a, instead of the time of your anniversary, we not be one year, we don't make a, as well three months. Where you exit. And you got some so, people they so, take position, so, public position, so, as a so, sack they don't travel out mm -hmm. of country. How do you get those? Well, that's why you have other benefits you go get. Mm -hmm. Now, I make we don't make them very clear. Mm -hmm. Penalties that they would invoke, in, in, including criminal prosecution. So, if you feel say you just so that you want your benefit. So, there are all safeguards for that, Lamrana. Mm -hmm. You see, this issue about publication of uh, assets, as I say, we have to. Pay attention to the law and let we take concrete steps. Uh, okay. Very serious yeah. steps Perhaps. for addressing it. Perhaps. Because at that, day, yeah. I will go one year. But but honestly, on the aspect of asset declaration, I want to let Fambo know say the commission has made significant progress mm. in it because um, the units now don't beef them up at the director of state house to ensure that at least those assets we come, we're able to prune them, we're able to verify them, and later we'll analyze them and do the comparison, as we say. Waiting, you be done acquire. Why you do your declaration? Waiting also, you don't get. Why should they exit? And that they now will give you at least some kind of solid position okay. for make any intervention we will want for me. Because sometimes people are afraid mm -hmm. of doing these things because they will feel say no ACC we want for no if I don't acquire more, mm -hmm. so that they will come after me for unexplained what. You see, so these are all the things, but it is always good okay. for them you declare because there are also times where you get society where we just assume, you know, wrongly as to this man, I get this, I get that. We make a where very important the day, for the public know, so they're not going to see somebody just then a fire and get something, they're not going to say he gets other sources no, that of is income. The about and it. In, all, <laughs> in all of these pairs, sometimes you go report somebody saying that this he get, and at the end of the day, they don't say it's part of the declaration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is always yes, good. Like at all yes. yes, particularly to, um, you mentioned and say, what if the person travel or he die? Somebody they ask, say, what's in the provision? Either he travel or he die within the three months before so declare if he left quickly. No, if you travel now, they say, mm -hmm. we will be directed. If you die, you don't die. Okay. You see, it happened in, it don't happen in several investigations. Okay. Like the late Mikhail Uba, whatever had happened. Somebody, they stand trial, ACC, he died. Let's just ensure that you get a certificate of death. 
Now they now bygones be bygones. Okay. okay. As to the round up quickly, um, would they talk about um, public service uh, officers rather? Mm -hmm. Now, so as you know, the president don't give a new cabinet to mm -hmm. announce them quickly. What do you make up of that cabinet, especially to young people? Eh? And again, the citizens manifesto will be the call on young people eh, for be part of governance. Employment for young people. Yeah. Well. I think the president don't put a lot of pressure on young people mm. because he don't float quite a lot of them for let them take the stage. So if there has never been an opportunity for young people than now, and not to just any kind of young people, mm. young people in our society see say they're really qualified and competent, they are on the stage now. And me, they really crave on the indulgence of everybody, let support them for succeed. Uh, their success should be our success, and I take this opportunity back for congratulating them. And I think, say, we the watch, we, if you look among many people in our SLP, people, they talk, say, no, them people, are, they are not really embedded within the party. It can be a blessing, it can be a cause. So then because of that, they, they know get the trappings and they're able to take decisions, we will make uh, things happen, uh, you know, faster. So I, I believe, say, um, it's good. Some people in the talk say experience not day. Mm. Uh, they don't get much experience. Then I want criticism way at the like from the public. Another uh, on the flip side, some people in the talk say, that, but they really have enthusiasm. Um, so you can't get all in one. Um, so so I think say uh, the the future of this country really day at the hand because really at the top of her. It's a very young person. Uh, David Senge, we watch in the pecking order. You get few experience. Answer inside inside that one day. So when they talk say you don't give you don't give with faith to people that are in experience. <laughs> but you know what see? The Bible says out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, now they the truth and energy they come. So sometimes just maybe, just maybe, now they one they go able to walk the trick. Uh, because young people, this has been even way that they write the TRC report, they talk say now we, we deprive young people of opportunities. Now they make them go na bush. They not get something, and I, from where you watch them background, they quite a number of them, they get very solid background, very solid track records in mm -hmm. the few areas where they don't become exposed to. Um, and the I, post war I, generation. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> I, 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 I believe, I believe say, uh, we say they get the support. I believe say they can deliver. And once they support, not to how much time you ask them for money, not to how much time you pray sing them, yeah. but how many times you they push reforms. And tell them alone and join together and push their reform. Like for example, the anti-corruption. And I want to let the young people and they let them join with this asset publication. Let them really become an example. Say me, not too much car ghetto. You don't even need law. I can make it public. Yes, yes. So you should me not too much car get. <laughs> you know, so um, you can make it public. So it's it start there. Um, I get a lot of faith in quite a number of them, uh, if not all of them. Okay. Finally, um, I will ask you about Parliament. Parliament they continue today. You know, mm -hmm. we just talked to Honorable Mamel Bangwa this morning. He saying still they go to Parliament and it's still a learning position. Say they for serve the people. We still get uh, uncertainty as to whether the main opposition <coughs> APC will show up in Parliament today. Um, you talk about a, a report you know, they released today and you know, they do work with Parliament, monitoring them and all of that. Waiting um, the. Um, continuous sitting of parliament mean without the main opposition. I, I see some people they talk about saying now one party state now gets <laughs> so, um, but I think say we look at satisfaction with democracy, we attract democracy across 35 countries in Africa, 37 mm -hmm. now through the Afrobarometer network. Sierra Leone now one of the three countries, then we look in the pecking order, second only to Ghana and West Africa, where they talk say we believe in democracy. In fact, the reason why. And they go back like, to the new report today, which says the country we get the high aspiration. We, they need a liking way to Guinea, they need a liking way to place the way military coup they take place. For let you cast a law on with democracy, I think that's something we every Sierra Leonean need to treat seriously. So nobody, if you, you prick SLPP their mindset, they only let parliament, let APC go to parliament, because that's what all of us want. Mm -hmm. If, if, if APC supporters, eh, in fact, right now, what's going to happen, there's a lot of fatigue with the setting. Mm. If they stretch and come to in the next one week, a lot of people will talk, say, we don't want this. Because there is a, there is a war fatigue, there is a violence fatigue. Mm. A lot of people, they want to let this country and move on. Mm. And especially, in Anamika, they start with 
how they protest election. You cannot protest election by boycotting institutions. You can protest election by pushing for, for reform, pushing for change. If the question around one of the big thing we big takeaway we are believe say is a strong merit uh, in the claims them na the issue around transparency. Mm -hmm. So if we, we, if you ask the electoral commission, it will talk say on transparency will not flout in the law. So if waiting APC be want for transparency in other part of the law, law go put another part of the law. Okay. See now, so electoral commission they do. The electoral commission they talk say, may not break any law on transparency. No law, no, no they talk say with the talks are for screen. Okay. But if at all that is an issue, let's go fix it. Okay. So, Andrew, thank you very much. We'll continue you. this conversation. Um, uh, Melvin, quickly, what can we expect from Parliament today? Well, today? quickly to Andrew in point about tracking effectiveness. There is one of the, this is one of the IPU benchmarks um, representation. So you cannot have an effective parliament in the absence of a pluralistic opposition. That is one. And also to ECSL, I see we dedicate a lot of efforts in critiquing, decrying new. Mm -hmm. But which we not do it. We, not, we don't put that same energy there in asking ECSL some of these questions. For example, how comes election on autonomous week now, ECSL is not in the capacity to pay its workers? Mm -hmm. Is that not a transparency and accountability issue? So don't forget about the partisan issue. Don't mean to dwell on the APC politics, but the basic administrative and management. Of course, okay. it may come, I mean, again, we'll be talk, we will get this impression that the election is well entirely funded by Sierra Leone. I was like taking aback for your recent Irish aid. Now they pay the work money. UNDP, what? Yes. UNDP and Irish aid. What yeah. could this mean? It means a lot. So okay. we have to be very careful with, with relations with the West and, and other places. Of course, election denial. I agree with you. It's a global phenomenon now. But from the case study of Ghana America, the best way for debunk or refute elections denial is when, when those election management bodies come out with the facts and make them open. Donald Trump, not, Donald Trump not will survive for and um, twist the establishment because the facts were there. Okay. Even when they call for a vote. So that is how you, you know, if, if, if somebody will deny you, that you not prove, prove are wrong, then. Definitely we will What's continue this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely we will continue it as we post election conversation. We get for the bingo back for continue with the discussion on issues, very critical issues. Accountability and transparency is very important. Um, 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 Sandy, people and wait for declare their asset. And if for Canada they ACC or they can just go online and do them from wherever they did. Wherever you did, you can do your declaration online. Okay. Save if you want for do paper declaration but actually we are discouraging that even next year when we do the declaration the and that biannual we want it to be paperless that means you do online because that need to help with for do what we call data analysis members of parliament as well for declaring oh, certainly yes okay that's well right. uh plenty thank to we guests and this morning um uh, we uh, get with three melvin tijan mansari senior parliamentary correspondent we don't help people analyze some of the issues in a parliament and accountability issue as well uh, Patrick Sandy from the ACC and Andrew Lavalli uh, from IGR. We definitely continue the conversation on post-elections and imagine issues.